you going? It's Richard from Off-Road Touring Life. Now today's video, it involves hints and tips for when you're using an awning on the side of your four-wheel drive. So it's not about what to look for when buying an awning. I did one of those a little while ago. This one's more a few little tips and things and a few little hints when using an awning when out camping. So I have five of those to share with you all. And there is a bonus one at the end that involves this green shopping bag. So stick around for that. Now before I even open the awning up, one of the things that I've always make sure I do is keep the zip well lubricated. So I use this Worth uh, silicon spray. Fine silicon spray works the best at keeping the dust and any of that mud and grit and stuff that can get in the zip there which makes it hard to open and close. Now quite a few years ago I was caught in a dust storm in the outback. It was actually off the old Strez Leckie track there and I had troubles even opening the zip up because of all the dust and grit that had got into it. Quick spray of the silicon spray and I was able to open it and close it quite easily. So just by doing that it just maintains it. So I've got the two awnings on the car so I always use that silicon spray on that. So that there is tip number one. What I'll do now I'll open up the awning and I'll share the other tips with you. So we're all set up there now. Tip number two that I will share with everyone. Now there's no need to be lazy when setting up an awning. Always peg your awning down. So I always have the hammer and pegs out before I roll it out because sometimes it is windy. Particularly if you're setting up by yourself, you want to have it all pulled out there and then you want to peg it down. It only takes a slight breeze for the awning to pick up. Last thing you want to do is have an awning rip up over the roof, break any of those plastic clips. It's one way to shawl fly away to ruin any weekend or any time you're using your awning and another thing is you don't want to damage a car break a window put a big gouge or scratching the paintwork just for something that could have taken you 30 seconds just to peg your awning down so yep tip number two always peg that awning down all right tip number three if you're camping when it's raining or it's wet and you're going to have water pooling on top of your awning Simply just drop one of the legs down on an angle. It doesn't have to be a massive angle. It just gives it enough for that water to pour off to the side there. And then you're not going to have water pooling on top of your awning, creating it to uh, have a pool on top. And then the Velcro will obviously eventually give way and then you're going to have it falling through. Again, potentially damaging your awning. So by simply dropping one of the legs down, that is going to stop any of that water pooling on top of your awning. And then you'll uh, have a good night's sleep and you're not going to wake up to a big gush of water land on top of your swag. So what I'll do now, I'll uh, get number four underway and I'll give you a look at one of our favourites for the uh, awning setup. So I'm halfway through tip number four for when we go camping and for things that you might want to incorporate with your awning setup. What we do, I have the wall here behind me. You can see how much area that has improved there. So instead of always pegging it down to the ground, two poles, three guy ropes, and it can increase your undercover area quite a bit. So we can comfortably fit a double swag and a couple of single swags and if we need to we can cook under it. I also have another wall which I can drop off the side there if the weather's terrible. And I'll show you what I do with this particular setup for when we have terrible weather or it's raining. It just includes one extra guy rope. So I'll get that set up now and I'll give you a look what I do with that one. And we're almost through to the end of the uh, hints and tips. OK, 
Okay, so in addition to tip number four, this also incorporates it. If you have uh, terrible weather, like I just mentioned, just simply grab the uh, guy rope, pop it on the middle of the awning there, and it creates that channel there. So any water you have will pull off through the middle there. And if you do that as well as dropping a leg on top, what we've found, you have no water on top there. So just a simple another peg and your guy rope down and it's no worries. Another beauty of having it like this as well, it actually holds all the awning down quite firmly in those strong winds. And then I will move on to tip number five. Now that brings us to tip number five. Now, it might seem like a really obvious one, but always pack your awning up dry if you can. Now if you get home and it happens to be wet, this material dries really quick, so it only takes probably half an hour to dry in a bit of sun, and it dries up pretty good. But yeah, always try and remember to pack it up dry reduces the chance of mold and stuff like that and then of course the material deteriorating quite quickly even the uh, velcro make sure it's all nice and dry but that's tip number five yes i know it's an obvious one but just uh, remember to do that when you get home it can be a bit painful when you're drying everything out after a good camping weekend but yeah sometimes i just end up rolling it down towards the ground and that's enough to dry it out if it is wet or you're leaving home leaving camp under wet conditions if it's a bit of a cold dewy night etc but yeah Okay, here we are, tip number six, or the bonus tip. Now at the start of the video, you might have been wondering, how can a simple green shopping bag be a hint or a tip for setting up an awning? Well, if you are camping somewhere where it's sandy, let's just say like the Murray River in here, down here in New South Wales and Victoria, or if you're over in Western Australia, or even on, along the coast of New South Wales and you're there for the day, and you, you're in you know quite windy conditions and you want to keep your awning down and you want that bit of shade, all you've got to do is get your shopping bag dig a hole, fill it with the sand, and attach your awning guy ropes to the strap of the handles there. So this can be used for camper trailers or tents. It's a simple idea, and this can just screw up and you know you can shove it under your seat or anything like that. It doesn't have to be the shopping bag. You, you can also use your recovery bag or anything like that just to keep the awning down and nice and firm for where you are that day. But yeah, the simple uh, green bag. It doesn't have to be green. It can be any color you want, but that just gives you another simple addition to do for a little hint and tip that I thought I'd share with everyone today. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy the five tips and the six bonus tip I threw in at the end there. Now, if you have liked what you've seen, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe. And if you've got a tip of your own to do with your awning, feel free to pop it in the comments section down below. I'd love to see it. And I also do reply to every comment that's written down there in the comments section. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Cheers. A lot of choices what you can use. You don't have to use a green bag, you can use a red or yellow or blue.